Yeah, so anyway, sorry about the late start, everybody. Welcome to your class today. So what I thought I would do for everybody today is kind of work in a little bit of a backwards manner. Now, this, particularly, this particular haircut was the, the nuts and bolts of it. The technique, the wet aspect was actually cut last week. So if you're interested in the technique that's on this head right now, um, then we can tag that in this feed and you can go and rewatch that later. What I wanted to focus on with this particular haircut is the last time we cut it, um, I air dried it with a diffuser. It was a really natural kind of wash and wear finish. But what I wanted to do today is actually dry this um, and finish it in a way that is more geared towards hairdressers like that perfection, work on hairlines, fringing, all of those aspects because the last time we dried it, it wasn't about that. So I just wanted to showcase for everyone out there today the difference in finish, how you can change a haircut based on how you finish it, and also the end result, all those little personalizing touches because sometimes in a demonstration, by the time you've been sort of talking to yourself in your lounge room for an hour, you don't really have that in you. So I'm going to do that today for you. So we're going to start where we left off. So to a quick recap, we worked through with a simple horseshoe through the top, working underneath the horseshoe. We worked through with some round graduation and we worked that all the way through to the front. We utilized a little bit of over direction so that our client could tuck it behind the ear. Then we released the horseshoe. We brought that all up square and cut vertical straight through to the front. And that is where we have left this off. So what I need to do first before I start um, to blow dry is apply some products. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is prep the hair. I'm going to prep it with a leave-in treatment. So if you were in the Wella range, something like a, the IMI Perfect Me is beautiful. Um, I'm using the Bieber product, the leave-in treatment. So it's a really good hydrator. It helps to even out the porosity of the cuticle. Um, now, as you can see as well, we've had some color work done. Um, and this is like turning into like a regular staple this mannequin in our lives. This is a beautiful color. I'm slowly chopping it all off. So I'm going to have to say goodbye to it at some point. But this is from Stuart Bain in Sydney, who's also in lockdown. Um, and he sent this one down. So I'm pretty stoked to give it a whole nother life. Okay. Now I want to have a little bit of hold, but not a lot. So I'm going to go through with just a tiny bit of root shoot. But when I apply this, I want to think about where I want to have that hold. I don't want to have too much hold below the widest part of the head because that's going to stick up. It's more just through this top zone. So let's just pop a little bit of this through. It's a directional spray. So I would be picking this up and just spraying a little bit and my wall, just wipe that off <laughs> through there. This is where you can get your friends on the other side of the salon. Just a tiny bit through here. Okay. And then the other thing I want to do is comb my products through, which I think is the step that um, when you're looking for that global glossy finish, a lot of people miss. You must comb these products through or brush them through. Cool. So if you're joining us for the first time, um, my name's Lyndall Salmon. I work at Bieber Academy and we're in lockdown in Melbourne for what actually feels like forever. So what we're doing is we're just jumping in line to my lounge room and we're doing some haircuts and we're doing some hair together. Um, we have a comments feed as well that everyone's welcome to write questions. Um, we have a lovely cameraman on the other side of this that can read them out as well. So please feel free to put any questions in the comments. This is a really open um, space, so no judging, whatever, nothing's off the table. Um, and yeah, let's just try and forget what's going on in the world right now and do some hair for an hour. Okay. Sound good. Okay. So, so strange to start at the finish, but I thought, you know what, why not? We can do whatever we want. No one's here to tell me off. So I'm going to start with my wrap dry. Now, the first thing I want to do is take the nozzle off. Because as soon as you put a nozzle on, you're directing the airflow in a particular way. And when I start a wrap dry, I want like global airflow. You know, I don't really want to push that cuticle anywhere in particular. The reason I like a wrap dry finish for something that's going to look really glossy and shiny for a competition is because the hair still moves. 
you know, like, and I think that that adds an element of beauty when you are doing something that's quite structural, like it's not too stiff. So first thing, take the nozzle off, okay? And this is where you find out if my AirPods are working or not. So hopefully you can still hear me. So I'm going to start this through the back, okay? And I've got to lift my arm up and it's all about this hand and I'm shaking the roots forward, okay? And what I'm thinking about is loosening the hair off the scalp, okay? The reason I have to have my arm up is so that the airflow is going down the cuticle. So it doesn't matter where I move it, the air will always blow down that cuticle. And so that's going to help you with that glossy, shiny finish. As soon as I drop my arm, I always think about, you know, what I always say, it's like patting a cat backwards. The cuticle is like, do you know what I mean? So you always want that air to go in the same direction as the cuticle. I like to swap hands as well for balance. So if you're just at the start of your incredible hairdressing and barbering career, I recommend trying to, where possible, swap hands um, to work on that dexterity of having both strength in both hands. Okay, So it will help you down the future for shape and balance. So still shaking it. And I want to shake this off the root until I get myself at a point of sort of 70-80%. That's when I can start picking up the tool that I want to use. The tool being, for me today, my baby paddle brush. So if your tool is a round brush, that's when you would pick that up. Did it go live into the event? Did this actually work? Am I talking to myself? <laughs> All right. So I think I'm about there. So I'm going to grab my brush. Now, I still don't need a whole lot of direction and a whole lot of projected airflow. So I'm still going to go with no nozzle, okay? Which really kind of irritates a lot of people, yeah? Oh, we got the thumbs off. Thumbs off. Yeah? Oh, great. Amazing. All right, so I'm wrapping the hair around the head, okay? <laughs> Is it Daniel Reynolds? Oh, gosh. Yes, Daniel. I took the red pill this morning. <laughs> What's, oh, cool. So those of you that have just joined... Um, what we are doing is working in kind of reverse. So this is the haircut that we did last week on that incredible colour that Stuart Bain did. So in, in relation to this particular haircut, it was a classic round graduation through the bottom and a square layer through the top. Now, the haircut that we did last week, we kind of all decided, hey, that looks really hot. And then we just left it kind of wet. And we had it as a really simple wash and wear haircut. But what I wanted to do today is just show the versatility of shape um, and how by changing the way you finish something, you can completely change what it is you've done. So those classic techniques can create textured, easy wash and wear looks, but then also they're critical for those that competition finish. So that's really what I wanted to focus on today is finish. We're going to be doing some hair lines and talking through and tips on things that I'm always looking out for when I'm doing hairlines. So we've started with the dry off. So I literally have not cut this at all since the last haircut. So we will really see how this shape is going to look dried in a different manner. So this is called a rack drying technique. I've got no nozzle. We've prepped the hair with some leave-in treatment and just a minimal amount of root shoot, which is a mousse in the Wella Imi range. And I'm wrapping from side to side. When I'm using that paddle brush, I'm using the whole brush. You know what I mean? So rather than just the edge, it's the whole brush. 
and swapping hands. He takes the red pill. Andrew Dunn, I can't believe you're in here watching. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we're moving away from our Disney Prince look today. And yeah, we're, I'm having a real FOMO missing my Weller Trend Vision family. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to push it into that competition realm. So products. Key, you have to use something in the hair. Just something, even a leave-in treatment when you want that glossy finish really will help. But hydration is key. If you want a glossy result at the end and if you want people to stop and have a look at your work in a competition, the hair has to look healthy. There's no point pushing hair to a point where it looks like it's been pushed. It just... It just um, you know, it has a sadness to it because it is sad. The cuticle's dead. So you need to make sure that it still looks glossy. So when I'm working here, if um, I work for high heat, high speed, and I control the temperature and the heat by moving my dryer back and forth, I think it's kind of the way... When you dry hair for a competition and you want that ultra glossy finish, it's a little bit like bleach. It's kind of like sometimes that slow and steady result gets you a better result rather than like packing on 30 vol and like, vroom, you know, and yeah, you got there, but like, woo, what was the damage? Okay, so I'm nearly through my mid-length, my roots and my mid-length. Just come down here. Yeah, the lifespan of this mannequin. This is good. What was that? Sorry, Bradley. Yeah, yeah, it's just, um, it, it actually happens I've, I've so many times. And, you know, definitely the competition that I have had the most, um, you know, exposure and experience in is Weller Trend Vision. And, I mean, back back when I was doing Weller Trend Vision, oh, my God, I think we kind of, we almost broke it. We pushed hair to the nth degree. You know what I mean? It was crazy amazing. And I remember being like, looking at some people, other countries from around the world and being like, oh, my God, that's so good. Oh, no, like the competition. And then right before the judges come out, they get the hairspray and just like, <sighs> yeah. And it's, and it, all of a sudden it's, yeah, it's like a little piece of it died, you know. So it's still got to look like beautiful, shiny hair. But yeah, usually we have um, an incredible competition circuit here in Australia and especially at Bieber Academy. We have our Bieber Next Level Hair Comp, which we haven't been able to run due to COVID. But for those that are in the room, it's like, it's the coolest competition. I love it. We block off the street. We do a catwalk up the, up the footpath. I think there's five or six trips to, to London to, to Sassoon's that were up for grabs. It was, um, it was amazing. All right, so I'm nearly there. I'm going to go through and I will put the nozzle on, okay? So this is for that last little bit for those mid-length to end. And now I start introducing this little finger to isolate little sections, come in, and then we'll follow that through. So at the moment, I don't have, you know, an overly strong idea of what it is I'm going to do today. I'll be honest with you. I just want to get this global glossy finish and then we can talk about those key features of how we're going to design these hairlines. Oh my gosh, Taiwan. 
Taiwan is next level. And I was so fortunate to actually go to Taiwan and judge their trend vision. Maybe it was three years ago or four years ago. And we did a show there, but it's, that is crazy. Taiwan is next level. Thailand, Thailand's amazing as well. UK always smash it. They're brilliant. And obviously, you know, no one can deny New Zealand. They've done some amazing looks there. But I think with the competition work as well, I mean, yes, you, you are exposed to some amazing work, but I mean, the people that you meet and the friends that you make from all around the world is, I mean, that's something that I will always treasure from my competition time. Swapping hands again, using that little finger, coming in parallel to the section, up, and then following that through all the way to the end, okay? So everything that, like, there's so many different ways to do things, and I think that that's one of the beautiful things about our industry. So if I'm doing something and you're like, oh, my boss doesn't do it like that or that's not how I'm meant to do it, that's absolutely okay because there's, there's so many different ways to do it. So I'm, whenever I'm showing you a demonstration of anything, it's just the way that I have been trained and the way that I like to train as well. So don't ever think that um, what you've learned is not the right way. There's just so many different ways, you know what I mean? And you can just count yourself fortunate that now you know more than one way. Yep. Okay. Round and round, getting all those ends around the head shape. Just tilt this forward. So this is the third evolution, I think, of this mannequin. So we'll have to definitely do some pick stitching, Stuart. So I would get this finish really sort of almost 80% done before I pick up those irons because the way that I would prefer to look at irons is that they are a finishing tool. So it's just like a glossing service. But I want to do most of it with my brush and my dryer. Okay. This is a very, very patriotic hair colour that we're doing right now, isn't it? Okay. So I think I'm nearly there. Oh, well, Alex has just pointed out, even as the model, but I think what you need to realise with these competitions is that you actually, there is no competition without the models. So, I mean, it feels silly even saying model because for me, whenever I've done anything and I've excelled at it, um, that's because that model is a friend and turns into like a human, like a proper human, real person friend that you care deeply for. And I think it's that element of teamwork that almost comes through in that work. You know what I mean? Rather than just plonking someone on someone you found, it's about working together. I mean, Alex has done some insane hairstyles, like wild. And But I think, Alex, correct me if I'm wrong, you actually like them. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, amuse. I think Stuart, that's that is the word, amuse. Someone 
yeah, that believes in your your craft and your creativity. And same with you know, like the word assistant. I mean, it's a, it's your teammate. But yeah, I hope we get back to live comp soon because it really is an important aspect. Okay, so I'm going to turn that off and I'm going to move into some work with the straighteners. And as I said, the way I want to look at this work with the straightener is more like a finishing service. So, you know, not changing that shape too much. So comb it down as true and real as possible, okay? Don't trick yourself because you can't you can't sort of iron out, iron your way out of a bad haircut, okay? So be honest and then you'll really see that shape. Comb it down into place. Okay, so we might start through the side here. I'm going to work through with just little baby fine sections. Well, Andrew's coaching UK transition in a couple of weeks. So oh, wow. Oh, amazing, Andrew. That's brilliant. Trend vision. Such a cool thing. All right, so I'm in. Pick it up with the comb. And I know this is silly to go over straightening and ironing, but... It really is important. End with the comb, okay? So I'm in, I'm down, and then I'm ending it with the comb. So one, two, I'd rather go over it a couple of times lightly than squash that shape. So I pick it up. I think for myself, the less that I touch this, you know, with my hands, the better because I'm, I'm lighter by using my comb. Okay. And just direct that hair so it can cool down through the side there. All right. I don't want to iron from the root either. If you need to be ironing from the root, potentially it's because that hair has reached the end of its lifespan, which you do not want for a competition. I think Taiwan as well, like there's just so many amazing looks that come out of there. The quality of hair as well is just like ah, amazing. I had a an interesting experience, um, one of my trend vision stories I can't remember where we were Alex around the world oh, actually I do we were in Frankfurt and I was on a bus and we'd kind of just completed we completed the, the the part of the competition where you do your look and you kind of don't know what's who's going to win or anything yet it was that hair world in Germany and we got on the bus and I'm on this bus with all the all the countries from around the world and I think it was Thailand had this yellow, this vibrant yellow. And I was like, okay, the competition's over. Tell me what it is now. Like, it's not Weller. You tell me what that yellow is because I've never seen anything like it. And he was like, no, it is. It's, it's Weller. It's like color fresh. And I was like, what? And he pulled out this tube of yellow and he's like, do you want it? And I was like, yeah, I want it. So I had this one tube of yellow and so for my next Weller Trend Vision look, which you might remember, it was the yellow stripe down the middle of Alex's head that was shaved and it was a global bowl with this like raw yellow core exposed and it was this one tube of yellow which I was like, oh, it's okay, I'll just get some more. But I couldn't. I had to get a friend um, who had a friend in Japan and it was anyway it was incredibly stressful but that's how I got that yellow color and it was a bit controversial because everyone was like oh that's not fair because we don't get that in Australia but I'm like nah. I was just being resourceful being a bit sneaky but I couldn't and, and now you can obviously get the yellow here but yeah I held on to this one tube 
I was using it so sparingly because you've got to you've got to recreate your look, which is one of the aspects of well a trend vision that I love. It's like because a lot of people, you know, get a lot of help to create photographic competition work, but then when you've got to do it live, it's like oh okay, it sort of sort, sorts everyone out, doesn't it? All right, I'm coming through under here. Same thing, um, when for Beaver Academy students that are in the room that are told to section with your comb when you're ironing, that is true. Um, but when you're dealing in these tiny little spaces, I like to section with my clip and get in there. And what I would say to you as well, in terms of the clips that I would be using for work like this, you don't really need anything bigger than that. Um, and those clips that are, look like big giant, like those crocodile clips, the worst. You're going to demarcate the hair um, as you're working through it. So it's really counterproductive to have those big clips. Yeah. So these small little ones are what you want to be working with. Dizzy, I did. I've got them. I did get my cloud nines back. It's funny. I think, I don't know what happened. I think Marilyn and I, yeah, we was like some crazy poltergeist in the academy. We lost all of our equipment. Okay, finish on the comb. Remember, consistency. So what I see a lot of people doing when they're ironing is they'll iron and then they'll come straight away with the comb on top and comb down really quickly. And for me, that creates a lot of static when you go like that because you, you're pushing it in the opposite direction um, and the hair's really hot. And I always sort of liken it to, you know, imagine doing a beautiful curl or something with the, with the iron. You wouldn't then take that out and then go straight away. I mean, you would if you wanted like a fluffy, you know, expanded shape. But most of the time, what you want to do is let it cool. You know, irons are hot. So I'm just placing that down and letting that cool in its form. So you can see now, this is from that previous haircut that we had. And now we've got all of these little shapes through here. Now, if this was a client, what might be happening is the client's like, oh, Lindo, it's feeling a bit long and all of that sort of stuff. But what I would have communicated when I'd finished the wet aspect of the haircut is that what we'll do is we'll dry it and then we'll come through and we'll design the perimeter together. So, like kind of narrate your way through that service a little bit and you'll find you can sort of settle and ease your client a little bit better rather than being like 100% mute silence, which everyone wants to do when you're learning because, I mean, you don't want to talk to the client you're kind of terrified, aren't you? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I would just kind of let them know the process of how you're working. Okay, bring this through. Back onto this side. Stop picking that up. And I know that this is like, seems like basic fundamental stuff, but sometimes... You can pick up that little, just that little tip and finish really is important. You can completely ruin a beautiful haircut by finishing it the wrong way for the hair texture, for the end result, all of that sort of stuff. So that's why I thought we would just slow down on the cutting today and just work through this. You can see that shine developing through the hair. You know, Andrew's watching, like, what are some things, Andrew, that you're looking for with that competition, that finish? I find it so stressful judging competitions. I think we were talking about that the other day because I, I you know, I feel like I've been on the other end of it so much more than the judging end that I know what the, the work that's gone into there. So I always, like, I want to spend like an hour looking at everyone's work and it's just so hard. It's so hard. Everyone does such a great job. But I think there's like a, if 
for myself, there's like an element of, of beauty. There still must be an element of beauty to the look. So if you want to squash it a little bit, just do it with the back of your hand. Under here. Finish with that comb. So probably about this point, this is where I'm sort of thinking about hairlines, what we should do with this. How's their eyes going? Some of these mannequins have eyes that terrify me, so I have to give them really long fringes. But I think um, Jamie, I think Jamie is our mannequin fan. Is that right, Jamie? <laughs> I think Jamie's doing okay. And I really oddly like this lip colour with the hair colour. Nice. It's like a puce pink. Andrew says, shine, balance, clarity, focal points of the face. Keep yes. It perfectly signature, the love of the look. Yeah. Balance, that's a huge one. Just... Suitability made it. Sometimes work is not. Yeah. Yeah, we sort of, when I, if I was to talk to students, like in the first time that they've, they're competing and creating something. I mean, I've done it. I've done some really like insanely like didn't need to go there moments. Um, you know, you try and do everything on the one head of hair. And I think, I mean, you just don't know where to look. It's like, oh my God, there's so many things going on. What is going on? So I think it needs to still, yeah, look holistic. And, and even though something might be asymmetric, it still can have balance. Do you know what I mean? It's about finding that balance. I was listening to Jack Morton talk this morning, actually. He did a really great sort of chat about his project that he's been working on called the U Project, I think. Um, yeah, and he was talking about balance, finding balance, and I was thinking about haircuts. Um, but, yeah, everyone's got a different view on balance, but the whole thing is – yeah, it can be asymmetric, it can be creative, it can be personal, but it still has to have balance. And from that balance, I think, gives it a sense of beauty. Okay. So we've got, remember this disconnection under here? So we've got this disconnection here that we can have a look at as well. Through this crown area. Have a look down here. You've got to be really careful ironing this. It's like just just licking those very ends. Yep. And I'm I'm more glossing it around the head shape. Okay. So you're kind of really subtle on those ends, and then finishing it with the comb. Good question here from Jamie Hintz. Hi Linda, as a first year apprentice and student with Eva, what advice would you give me regarding getting into the editorial hair industry and competitions in the future? Um, yeah, cool. So we've just had a question from Jamie about kind of getting into that competition world and that competition circuit. Um, I think you've got to start training your eyes. I think training your eyes takes a long time and I would – start working up a model portfolio as well I think is critical so I would I'm just always chasing models I've got my whole family chasing models actually they'll like oh I found this girl for you or like they're always carrying business cards around so uh, yeah I would I would start training your eyes and looking for models is a really great way to train your eyes as well but there's some um brilliant things out there there's lots of things online at the moment Lots of really talented, creative artists doing work. When I first started doing creative work, and actually, I mean, I'm kind of, I still work a lot like this, is the word collaboration. You know, collaboration is is huge. It's like my favourite way to work. So I would tee up with a student photographer. I would make friends that are just learning you know, how to do fashion styling. I would 
and you barter. Do you know what I mean? And you create a beautiful group of like-minded individuals and you all kind of grow together. And I think that's a really good way to get into, into it. Because then you, you bounce off each other as well. Okay. I think we're nearly there. All right. Then we can start. So you can see, like I would, if this was a halo, oh my God, that would just take me so long to dry as well. I probably, if this was a halo or um, a bowl, it would. I would probably want a little bit more pump on the bevel. So rather than using that flat baby paddle brush, I would have like upped the curvature of my cushion on my brush a little bit and moved into more maybe like a Denman, something with a little bit more curve. So just to show you what I mean by that. So, for, and again, this is just how I look at it, but when you're drying hair, what gives you that bevel? And what I mean by bevel is roundness, like a curve, a nice beveled edge. So when you look at this brush, when you dry hair over this, the air is hitting the hair as it's going over the cushion of the brush. So you can see this brush doesn't really give you a huge amount of volume, yeah, because it's only going over this little tiny cushion. So for an everyday just kind of wrap around, this is this is great. Now, if you want to have a little bit more volume, that's when I would move into that Denman because as the as the air hits the hair over the cushion, it travels around a little bit more. Yeah, so that's how I know which brush to use based on how much beveling I want on the ends of the hair. Yeah, and then obviously you want loads of volume, you want an infinite amount, all of a sudden you've got a round brush. So that air and the hair can go all the way around, around, around. So that's what gives you that huge amount of, of volume and movement. Yeah, it's just good to go over those basics, isn't it? Okay, so let's cut some hair. Now I could jump straight into my hairlines and start working on that, but I haven't I haven't refined my internal texture yet. Okay. So what I want to do is work through and make sure that this internal is exactly where I want it. Okay, so I'm going to work through and for myself, I mean, I've I've I shouldn't say I've stuffed up. I mean I kind of have. But there's so every time I do a competition, I'm I am very self-critical and so I will always even if I've won, I will always like be like what could I have done different? How could I have worked on that? How could I have improved that? And a lot of the time when I have been unhappy, it's because I haven't literally done this step. I haven't point cut through it. I got too excited by the perimeters and putting these graphic lines in it. I didn't add any internal movement. And by pointing through, what you can do is expose beautiful aspects of the color work as well. Yeah. So for me, this aspect, this point here, when you are working on this competition finish is really important. Okay, so we've got this square layer that I was talking about. Yep. So you can see, you can see these shapes now. So what I want to do is use a pointing technique to loosen this up. So I'm not changing the shape. So if you don't want to change the shape, you need to go directly into the into that cuticle, into the hair shaft. So I'm promoting movement. Okay. So this is a great way to cut yourself as well. So by picking the depth, and I establish the depth. And then I move along the section. I find myself, I find I cut myself a lot less rather than coming in and out and in and out. Cool. So this is a point point cutting technique. This is really my go to weight removal. It's my go to promotion of movement. All of that. And I don't want to go too deep. Comb it out, okay? It's really important that you comb it out. This is a, a texturizing technique for me is a visual technique. So I need to visually watch what it is I'm doing. Do you know what I mean? I need to like, and if the hair is all still in there, I can't, I can't assess the movement and see what's going on. So it's really important to comb out that excess hair.
So this really is like being at a comp because sometimes you're like on stage with no no mirror. <laughs> so we're we're reenacting um we're reenacting Hair World at Frankfurt, Alex. Do you know how embarrassing it was when I was in Frankfurt at Hair World? So I'm on stage and I don't know, I don't know what came over me. They come up to me and they're like, oh, and here we have Miss Australia. And they like come up to me and they've got the microphone and I can see all of my Weller Australia family in the audience there just like going, oh, yes, she's going to get a question. And he comes up and he's like, what's the greatest thing about Germany? And, I mean, I could have said anything, but I said asparagus (laughs) and it just was like, it was like you could just hear a pin drop because it just made no sense. But like I'd just eaten asparagus and it was really delicious. And anyway, I just, I got off stage and they're like, what is wrong with you? You had one chance and you're like, and you said asparagus, which I don't even know if it translated because I think it's called like something else in German. It's not even called asparagus. But anyway, there's a, there's a story you didn't ask for. All right, so we've got more movement through there. Can you see that now? This is looking softer. Um, It's got a little bit more movement through it. Let's move into this crown area. Pick this up and do a similar thing. So I think that the whole of the Weller team were sending me pictures of asparagus for like months afterwards. (laughs) I was getting all these, I was getting trolled. It's really good asparagus. <laughs> it was. It was white asparagus season. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm a I'm a simple country girl. I'd never seen white asparagus. <laughs> so working consistently as well, like a consistent depth through that. I don't want to do one bit right down there and then the next bit on an angle where this gets point cut and this doesn't work systematically yeah and the results will show the hair will move in an even manner remember comb it out assess keep going So in terms of this shape through the back, we've got this small amount of disconnection here. See that? Got that square layer through the top. So what I think I might do is just chop a little bit more through this disconnection. And I think that I actually like it because it's just going to give it a little bit more movement. I don't want to connect it but I really want to soften it. Just curious to ask you, which country has been your favourite transition? We've been to a lot. My fa- One of my favourite transitions of all time was New York. Like, I loved that. I was I didn't compete, um, but I was there as a guest and it was, it was insane. It was so cool. I remember that, and I went with, um, my husband Bradley who's on the other side of this this camera um, and I remember they had everyone got a New York cheesecake right and so that was the dessert and then what they did is they put the next year's Weller Trends that they were launching there in colour tubes and that was like a to squirt on your New York cheesecake so there was like a for Blaze which was the theme there was like a red raspberry coolie and then they had and anyway I, we were just like so happy and excited and we're like oh my god this is amazing and my husband's a chef and we're like this is the greatest idea ever so I think what we did is we collected some of them off the table and I put it in my bag because I thought it was such a great idea that I wanted to remember it and then we woke up the next day with like pounding headaches um, and turns out they weren't real color tubes they opened at the other end so all of my bag was just like 
filled with like <laughs> all of this chocolate and raspberry. I mean, that's not a good memory, but it was, that was crazy. It was very cool. I mean, it is really hard as well to top um, Monaco. That was, that was insane. We, we landed in Nice and then we um, all got private helicopters to fly to Monaco. So your each individual Weller team. I mean, how's that? <laughs> Very nice work, Stuart. I enjoyed it. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So I'm happy with this internal now. There's just a little bit of weight under here from this grad. So that's the same section that I used to cut it. Pull this out and just break that up. Yeah, I'd never seen snow. Yeah. That was the first time I've seen snow. Maybe first and last. Oh, no, I think it was snowing in, um, where were we? In Germany. When we're in Germany. Monaco was the dream. Monaco was amazing. I did love Germany though, and Andrew Dunn and myself made a video called The Heart of Hairdressing. That was pretty special actually. That was really cool. If anyone's ever seen it, maybe Alex can stick the link in the. And that was like, that was really amazing. It was like all the people that I'd met that had entered this competition over the years, and we got to make a little video together. Okay, so always having my wrist nice and flat so that I can work up into the hair, yeah, as opposed to twisting it. You know what I mean? You want to really, like, when I when I do that as well, my arm is up and it's, you know, damaging for my shoulder, but as soon as I roll that down, it can drop back um, and it's just a lot better for your own back health. All right. So I think we are ready for some hairlines. So what you want to do is clean all that excess off. Now we already have a line through the back and we've got some things that we need to work some parameters because model models, mannequins have slightly annoying hairlines that we have to work around. Okay. But having said that, it's kind of good too, because you, you, you presented with, a challenge, you know, something that you have to work with. All right. So let's see where we are at. So what I want to do, we've got this shape. We have this shape here. Yeah. So I think that I should be, I can come up and around, keep a corner here. Then maybe what we could do is come up here and keep a corner there. See up in here? So it's all about, yeah, I, I kind of like, maybe if we kept this corner and then we had another corner in through here and then that's gonna help with this line in the back here. I think we should just start cutting and then we'll see where we go, which um, to be brutally honest is literally how a lot of these finally, these final elements come together in my brain um, yeah, it's not till you're presented with that, that case right in front of you. Okay. And in terms of a starting point, you guys can actually see this side is shorter. So I think I should start on this side so that I'm able to match and get that balance. Yep. So I'm going to start over here. Whenever you're pointing for myself, I would balance on the head shape. Okay. So I'm balancing on the head and I'm balancing on a finger. I'll come around here so you can really see. Just make sure you don't go up into that hairline. Nope. Okay. And we're here and I'm pointing. So even though I want a straight end result, I need to be using a pointing technique. And for me, that looks um, just a lot more beautiful than coming straight across. 
So you're using the points. This is where you really have to have those points on your scissors. Check. Balancing on that finger, coming up. Little tiny points. This is so much easier on a person as well. Um, I love doing a strong hairline. I mean, those that know me know that I do like doing a strong hairline. I like to do a strong hairline even on a client in a salon as well. For me, this is like the best business card you can have walking around the street. Is a really strong, um, beautiful, distinct hairline shape. If ever I see a client walking around, I'm, I'm always like, hey, where'd you get your haircut? You know, I mean, I'm not even going to go there and get a haircut, but I'm just always so curious because for me, it just really stands out as something that looks really polished and finished. Okay, so let's stop there. And we'll come through and we'll have a look at this other side. So I will centralize myself, which, you know, with no mirror and no spine is not the easiest thing, but look, let's give it a crack. We'll go about here and then we will start working up this side. Again, using those points. which takes a little bit longer, but the result is there. So as I said, the look that we've done today, the actual technique and nuts and bolts of this haircut was completed last week. And when we were doing it, we were kind of all like, hey, that looks, that looks nice, just natural. Should we leave it? And I think collectively, I mean, it was maybe a really sunny day outside and we all decided to just bail and leave it. So I wanted to come and revisit this and do some stronger shapes through the perimeter and just talk through, you know, some of those aspects of creating the detail. So for myself with these hairlines as well, it's about, a, I like curved shapes. Um, I think that that kind of curve and that arch um, has a beauty to it that I love. You know, I spend a lot of time looking at those Sassoon haircuts. And for myself, that's where I would get a lot of my inspiration and my my training is from following those, the cutters that come out of Sassoon's. Point, point, point. So if you want a curved line, you have to use your points. If you don't use your points, I bet you you're going to end up with a hexagon. Yeah, so you need to have these points sharpened. In through here. Okay, so looking at that balance, we've got that little bit there that I think might just have that nice element of softness through that. This is where I get really quiet, sorry everyone. <laughs> This is my concentration area. But always balancing on this hand. Okay. So let's have a look at both our sides. You can see probably got just like a little bit more of an arch there because we didn't have the corner there, but I might be able to bring this one up just a little bit more to create a little bit more of a point up in here. The thing that worries me with the mannequin is once you hit the hairline, that's kind of it. 
Whereas on a person, I mean, I don't have that fear because I can just clipper it, which I have been known to do. Um, in terms of a client, you know, if you are doing a stronger hairline on a client, I always just approach it for myself like a fringe trim. You know, just let them know if you're in the area, drop in, I'll clean it up for you. you know I mean, so it's looking as amazing as possible for as long as possible. Because, like I said, this is your business card walking around, yeah? All right. So let's get, so you can see we've got this movement, we've got a bit of strength. I'll just clean that hairline. Right. So what I might do now is jump to the front, okay, because I'm not sure how we're going to go with these corners here. We'll see. But bring this around and let's talk about this front aspect now. I think I want to do like quite, quite a strong fringe that wraps around and maybe has this element of like we can shatter through this, but we've got a really strong fringe through there. Because I think that this element of slight softness here would offset this soft slightness, soft slightness, soft, slight softness through there. Okay, so let's put this chair down and have a look at this fringe. Try and get yourself eye line with what you're doing. Okay, so we'll come through here. I'm going to cut it through my comb. Okay, so I'll pick this up, move around so everyone can see, I'll pick this up, even like grabbing it with your hand can be a little bit heavy sometimes, so I use my scissors, I'm coming in, okay, run over it a couple of times so it's nice and smooth, using your wide teeth, this is not about tension right now, and I want a point cut, okay, to remove some of this length. And what I might do, yeah, is we'll start to create this shape through the front, okay? So run over it using those wide teeth. We want a strong line, but I need to point cut. So it still has an element of softness to it. So I've used a little bit of elevation as well, and that little bit of elevation on this line is going to soften it. Yeah, so when you drop it, it just slightly moves and it has a little bit of a softer look to it as well, rather than being at zero degrees. So pick that up and let's keep going. Fringes are definitely something that terrify people. Um, and I think, I mean, obviously, what you're working with is right in the front of your client. So there really is nowhere to hide there. But surely this kind of longer curtain bang is going to go out sooner or later and we're going to come back to some stronger looks through the front. I hope so anyway. Pick that up. Run over a couple of times. Wide teeth. And coming around. But you have to have the points on your scissors. Um, you need to make sure your tools are up to scratch. You really don't need that many tools in your kit to be a hairdresser or to be a barber. Like I feel like barbers have more, but you know, so you need to make sure that what you have you love and is is actually in really good working order. It's so important. I would rather, especially with scissors and things like that invest that little bit more money, try and save up a couple of birthdays and some Christmases. Okay, bring that around. Now, there's something about this corner here I want to keep. So I might just shatter it.
I mean, that's the thing about hair. You can kind of do whatever you want as long as it looks good. So, yeah, a bit of a hob. You can't go wrong with a bit of hob in there, can you? Um, yeah, see, I like that. And then see that pointing in through there is just giving it a softness through there. Now, I'm thinking, I mean, automatically my brain goes 100 miles an hour. See that? That's going to have to be soft if that's soft, but we'll get to that. Let's move through into the other side. I mean, this has been one of the one of the good things about this time that we've had online, you know, operating is being able to work on mannequins and work through shapes and really refine techniques. So run over it a couple of times, you know. I guess I'm always about trying to find that silver lining in the situation. And pointing. Now, in terms of getting balance through both sides, I mean, your mirror is your friend. There really isn't like an easy, an easy answer to this. Go, go longer and then go shorter. <laughs> Maybe that's some good advice. But also fit it to your client's face. You know, that's one of the things when I'm looking for a hair model as well. Someone to collaborate with is like some cool facial features. You know, something that just draws that eye in. Um, Pavlos Divitaris, who's the founder of Bieber and obviously one of my major mentors, always says that the eyes are the the eyes are the window to the soul. So whatever I do, he's always like, "Can't see the eyes, can't see the eyes," and I'm like, "Ah, you don't understand. This mannequin has really bad eyes." You know, so I like to have a little bit of an eye in there as well. You've got to keep your mentors happy. Okay, and remembering we're rounding that around, softening that. And then we've got a little bit less on this side, but we can still chop up into that. So very different to how this haircut looked when we finished it last time, but the exact same haircut, you know. So that's that kind of that that power of finish. So let's refine that. I mean, you could, those of you that know that kind of competition and pushing things, you could actually just do this for like hours, don't you reckon? those of you that love doing competition work, like this is the stuff that you just love working on. Okay, so we'll have this soft bit through here. We've got that, that sharper fringe. And it's just a little bit of, this mannequin has an eyebrow that's going to irritate the life out of me here. Cut that. So yeah, key things to take away for these this line work is the points I'm pointing at. Even though the end result is sort of a sharper, more graphic line, it's approached with a pointing technique. And you'll find you'll you'll get that that beauty, that soft element, you know, and talking about um, features, focal features and stuff like that, colour is an aspect of that. So this this is a bold colour, do you know what I mean? So when you're talking about maybe only having three focal features, the colour is one of them. It's not just about the cut. It's about having that that sort of those focal features combined with the colour. Bring this one round a little bit more. Look, and this is the beauty of the mannequin. It's going right in that eyeball there. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't even mind. She hasn't even flinched. Jamie. Better elevate it away from the eyeball. Look at that. <laughs> So 
So yeah, I thought what we could do for some of these classes as well is really focus on some specific aspects of things like this pointing and the finishing. Um, yeah, how does everyone feel about that? Just agree. <laughs> Because we've done a lot of haircuts now, hey. Isn't it amazing? Like you that's the thing with the classics. You never, ever, 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 ever run out of things to do because everything, every single look, every single haircut in the world is a combination of classic techniques. So I'm not teaching every time I'm up here and I'm doing something, I'm not showing you a haircut that I know. We're kind of just combining and sparring techniques together to come up with something, yeah? Awesome. So now this bit here, this is bothering me. And because this comes up, I think what I'm going to have to do is just soften off this. I can't, I think if I came and did a graphic line up in there, that that's not, it's actually not going to be an attractive thing, yeah? And it's all about, but we've got this hairline here. So what I might do is similar to the softness that we created there, we'll, we'll come up and let's destroy this corner. You know, I can use the words destroy because I've cut this with such love. So it's, it's kind of cool to cut something really precise and then destroy it. But you've got to build it first to break it. Okay, and then all of a sudden that's looking a little more digestible. And I was, you know, listening back to what Andrew Dunn, who is judging competitions, and I think that that's something that needs to be talked about a lot now in comp work is that commercial viability. You know, you can't just do things for the sake of it. Those days are gone. Do you know what I mean? Like people want to be able to wear the look. So have an element of sharpness. Have your like digestible consumer soft bit. Have an element of sharpness. Do you know what I mean? Try and tick those boxes, especially if you're going to do a competition. Okay, in through here. And then this, this corner here too. Remember we just, well, I decided I didn't like it. So I'm going to destroy it. Okay. So I'm still, I'm keeping it. But I'm pointing up into it very deeply. And all of a sudden then it works. It works with this softness and it works with this softness. Yeah. Remember pointing, comb it out and see what you're left with. Okay. I think we're almost done. So what I do, this top bit, I'm just going to shatter this a little bit more just to promote a little bit more movement, just working through there. Then I'm going to talk to you about finish of how I would sort of finish this and style it. First thing you want to do is blow dry the air off and blow dry all that excess hair out. And also what I'm doing is I'm putting a little bit of movement into the hair, okay? So this bit through here, you could, if you wanted to add that little bit of movement in a different direction, I would just do that with my with my hands and put a bit of tension on here. And you could just put that little bit there out. Yeah. Just kind of emphasize those bits. There was this little bit here as well. Remember we liked something up here? So you could just put some extra air through that.
but you've got to be careful because too many and then all of a sudden you've like teased it. It's a really technical term. How are we going for timing, Bradley? What is a five? All right. Yeah, I like these little these little bits through here. And it kind of adds a bit of like, like, I don't know, if you're a judge and you're looking at something, like just a bit of a, like, uh, like a relax mode, you can kind of relax a little bit looking at it. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do, which is a bit uncouth, is I want to get this really nice global shine, right? So I want to see here as well, because we cut that when it was dry, it has got a little bit of a sharp edge to it. So I'm just going to add a little bit of leave-in treatment. Okay. So this is like my secret to kind of softening off those edges so they can just chill out a little bit. Okay. So that was leave-in treatment. So in the Weller, I would go through with like some hydrate. And it kind of just allows that hair to go. And just especially if you've ironed it. Um, it takes off that ironed look. Okay. Okay. So we're back to here. Let's have a look. How are we going here? So the next thing I want to do. Maybe just actually just put a little bit of that through the back, a little bit of leave in. Make sure that's sitting down nice and flat. Um, so the next thing I'm doing is just going to get a little bit of hairspray. And I know we had this big rant about hairspray being bad, but I'm going to be using it for these flyaways. And what I will do that's a little bit different is I'm going to spray it onto this tissue, okay? So I'm going to spray this tissue. This, this isn't like a hair comp because the reason I make that one is because I'm freaking out about that because that's really weird. Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, you'd have like some kind of face shield on or something like that. But spray the tissue. And I've got the Mystify Me in the Imi range. And just spray that so it's not as heavy it's not as solid and it's just helping me with these flyaways cool all right now the other product that I love to use is like a shine spray um, and you know that that's the thing that you want to get across the line with so it looks really healthy um, you know a lot of that color work as well they'll color still do like a shine band or something through there so that that shine spray is critical this is a beautiful one because it's an aerosol base so sometimes when you're putting like a wet shine in there it can like dob on the hair and it's like oh my god it's devastating now I just I'm actually going to use the shine spray just to add that little bit of movement through the back there. And I think we're nearly done. But Yeah, it's just nice to spend some time working on our finishing details. Do you know what I mean? I mean, and I could probably keep cutting this fringe for the next the next two hours and still want to keep cutting it. But literally in a competition, this is what I'm doing. Um, and yes, as Alex pointed out right now, this is where the makeup artist is like hating me. 
<laughs> One of the things about Weller Trend Vision is that, I mean, the, in, when I was in, oh, lost my AirPod. Sorry about that. When I was in Monaco, um, my makeup artist was was my assistant, who's Courtney. So she learned how to do that makeup look. So I mean, that was someone very close to me that I really couldn't piss off. Okay, right in front of what you're doing. I'm using that pointing technique just on that last little bit, which is what I would do. I sort of get it right in that last moment and then do your final touches. So you would have a tissue covering the face. Can you see this, just that last little bit? Because every time you move it, it's going to just slightly change. So right before you're heading out down the catwalk, you've got to do that last final bit. Oh. And I think we're about there. So this is, uh, yeah, our haircut from last week. I just wanted to take some time to dry it, work on some hairlines with everybody, fringes, talk about comp work, if we remember what that was, because it feels like it's been a while. Um, but yeah, this beautiful colour is from Stuart Bain, who sent me this mannequin. So thank you, Stuart. Um, in terms of the technique that we worked with, we took a horseshoe section, we worked with some rounded graduation through the underneath, and then we dropped in with a simple, long, classic square through the top. Top and bottom techniques, the two techniques don't connect. So this is a disconnected haircut. But it's that thing of talking about ba balance, um, even in something that's asymmetric. Uh, we then went through, we prepped it with some leave-in treatment or if you're in the IME range, going through with some Perfect Me. Um, and we've done a wrap dry. Yeah, so just a really natural, super movable um, type way to dry the hair. Then we've glossed it with the irons, remembering to, when you're ironing, you want to finish with the comb, yeah, with the comb underneath and sort of place that hair where you want it to cool down. Really key element when you want it to create those competition finishes, right? Then once you've done that, you want to come through and you want to get your internal movement and the internal shape where you want it before you come and do your perimeters, okay? So what I mean is point cut. Don't spend a whole lot of time creating a beautiful perimeter and then you go and point cut it and you've taken away the strength of the perimeter. So make sure you're working in that sort of that systematic way. Get the internal and then the last thing, come and do that perimeter. Yeah. It's like putting your shoes on before you put your pants on. Doesn't make any sense. Okay. Also, neither does that analogy. But anyway, <laughs> um, uh, another thing when I have done competitions, pointing is a key aspect for adding that element of movement and beauty. So if you can live by my mistakes, do it because it's going to expose elements of the color. It's going to promote a little bit more movement and it just makes the whole thing look a bit more expensive. Okay. With those perimeter lines as well, try balancing on a hand when you're creating those. Okay. And I think, you know, I've seen makeup artists, they'll balance, they'll balance as well when they're creating something. So it's the same thing when we're doing a detail, balancing on those hands. Yeah. And using a pointing technique to create a curved shape, otherwise you're gonna end up with a hexagon. Yeah, makes sense? If you're cutting in here, the only way to get a shape is a hexagon. Whereas if you're using your points, the points of your scissors are infinite. So you're gonna get really beautiful curved shapes. Um, but yeah, don't have too many focal points. Don't go ham on the hairspray because you can like ruin the whole thing. Um, and yeah, that's today's class. So we'll see you next week in the lounge room at 3.30. Everyone take care of yourself and, yep, bye from Lindell Salmon and Bieber Academy.